Good morning. My name is Mr. Orlando B. Manuel. I'm your teacher today in biology class. What we're going to discuss today is all about the human respiratory system. Before we start with our lesson today, I'm going to ask you to do certain activity. This is very simple. What we're going to do is you're going to inhale and exhale. Okay, can we do it? Everyone? Everyone? Let's do it. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. How do you feel every time that you inhale and you exhale? Yes. It gives us a something that we become comfortable every time that we inhale because it gives us strength because that is what we call breathing. Breathing is the mechanical process of getting oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide in the body. It consists of two stages. We have what we call the inspirations or inhaling. And we have the expirations or exhaling. So that's why once that you inhale and you exhale, we take in oxygen from the air. Uh, to supply the different body parts and exhale carbon dioxide which give us the which well, something that uh, this is the waste product of the respirations in our body now in breathing requires pressures and changes I have here uh, this is a, an example uh, this is an improvised examples of our lungs this is made up of the bottle of a soda. And this is the straw, and we have two straw here, and we have also these balloons. And of course, we have these balloons and under this bottle. We're going to do certain activity, and I'm going to explain it to you. When air passes through our body, it flows from the area of high pressures to areas of low pressures. When we inhale, there is no pressures inside our, uh, in the lungs because of the contractions of muscles and also the diaphragm and ribcage which expands uh, our chest cavity, drawing air inside the body. I want you to look what happened to this balloon once that we put it down. Okay, what have you seen? to the balloon up once that we pull it down. Yes, the balloon expand. This is something that once that we inhale, our chest cavity is getting expand because what, like what I've said, there is a lot of pressures in the lungs and uh, because of the contractions and muscles. Uh, when we exhale, there is a high pressure in the lungs because of the relaxations of the diaphragm and also the ribcage, which compress the lungs uh, to its previous state expelling the air in the lungs. Now, uh, the respiratory system glass serves as the transporter of gases in the environment. The different parts of the body, it consists of organs that are mostly tubular in structure to serve as a passageway for oxygen going in, carbon dioxide, and going out. Like what I said, the carbon, the oxygen is going in and the carbon dioxide is going out. Now, there are different parts in, that we need in respiratory system. The first one is we have the, what we call nose, okay? We have nose. Air enters in the body through the nostrils of the nose. And the nostrils have the two passageways. We have that so it is being separated by the septum. And inside the nostrils are the nasal hair. You know, class, the function of that nasal hair is to trap dust and other foreign particles to prevent them from entering in our nasal cavity. Air is warm, okay? Air is warm. If you're going to put your hands under your nose, please try it. Then exhale. Okay, what did you feel? Correct. What you feel is an air, the air is warm and moistens inside the nasal cavity. 
where the use of blood vessels and vehicles. You know, the smaller particles and microorganisms that make it through the nasal cavity are being trapped by uh, endoceliated mucous membranes that lines the walls of the cavity. And aside from having a mucous lining, also has what we call cilia, which this is a microscopic structures that resemble hair. And you know, the cilia <clears throat> bit more than 1,000 times per minute because the mucus uh, moves upward and anything that is trapped in the mucus is being expelled through uh, uh, is nasal or coughing. Okay, now the next one is we have this what we call trachea. Trachea it is found below our larynx. This is a tough muscular tube. It is supported by many ring cartilages in order to, so, to stop it from collapsing. So this is structure is called trachea and it is lined with cilia and mucus. The purpose of that mucus and that cilia is to trap the bacteria and the dust particles from the air. So therefore, the cilia sweeps the dust upward and away from the lungs. We are very lucky. Why? It is because inside our, inside our trachea, there is a cilia and a mucus that trap those dust so that it could not be entered inside our lungs. Now, since the, this is our lungs and this is our trachea, there is also passageway in order for the air to enter going to the lungs and that is what we call bronchi. <clears throat> and it has two passageways of air from the trachea going to the left and also going to the right. This, the branches of bronchi called the bronchioles, okay? We call them as bronchioles. This is what we call the bronchioles. And these bronchioles are called, uh, which lead to the balloon-like structures. And that is called as alveoli. You know, class, inside this alveoli, inside this alveoli, uh, this is very is responsible on exchanging of gases when the alveolus has a very has a very thin and a moist wall, and that is surrounded by small vessels and capillaries. Okay, this is the part where the oxygen and the carbon dioxide is diffused to the capillaries and also the alveolar wall. Now, when we inhale, when we inhale, the air we breathe diffuses to the alveoli and capillary walls where the oxygen molecules and other gas molecules are picked up by blood cells and then transported to the different cells in our body. The red blood cells, the red blood cells in the body collect the carbon dioxide and it is being produced by the different cells and then transport it to our lungs so it can be exhaled when we breathe, okay? So that is how the carbon dioxide and our oxygen is being diffused inside our alveoli. Now, we are, I like what I said, we insist that we have these kinds of lungs. The lungs occupy the region and your chest are separated by the heart, esophagus, and also our blood vessels. The left lung, if you're going to look to your left lung, this is smaller than our right lung. Because the left lung is, uh, the reason why it is small, because uh, it is being occupied by our heart. See, there is what we call heart. The lungs are spongy in nature and are surrounded by double pleural membrane, uh, which secret mucus and act as the lubricant helping the lungs to move freely. And because of this respiratory system, we are able to breathe every day. It supplies the oxygen into our body. We have to remember that we have a relationship with other living things such as the plants. Why? Because the plants give us an oxygen and the plants also help us to live every day. But every time that we release the what we call carbon dioxide is being utilized by the plants. 
the plants use the carbon dioxide in order for, for the plants to leave and make their own food through the process of the photosynthesis. We have to understand that the moral value of studying this respiratory system is we have to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. We should avoid smoking so that we do not have any problem with our lungs, a respiratory problem. If we're going to continue to live healthy, then we will live happily and joyfully. Thank you very much. I hope you learned in our discussions and have a nice day. Thank you.